Join preventive neurologist Dr. Kellyanne Nyotis and movement specialist Beth Lewis as they explore innovative ways to sharpen cognitive function through movement, visual training, and attention-focused exercises. A lot of people, as they get older, it's natural with age to start to have some decline in certain cognitive processes. So for example, attention and processing speed really start to decline with age. And especially after the age of 70, they kind of really fall down, fall off a cliff. Um, So processing speed is really referring to how quickly you take information in and and react to it. While attention is pretty self-explanatory, it's just how long you can focus on something and how distractible you are. It turns out that these cognitive domains are often the ones that are impacted even in people who complain about memory loss with age. They're saying that they have short-term memory issues, but really it's that their attention is really poor. So if you don't pay attention to something, you're never going to be able to encode that into storage and long-term memory. So I bring this up because there are ways that we can train, for example, processing speed. Processing speed is a a combination of how quick we can react, so reaction time, but it's also an understanding of our visual search and visual awareness. If you have an issue where your eyes aren't able to look up, really, really common with age, people start to look down more, but also really common with neurodegenerative disease, a good chance that your visual processing and processing speed isn't going to be great. So simply training some visual movement there can actually help processing speed in. And we see that a lot. Um, That's just one example. Another example is we have this amazing patient who is a a dancer, a pattern dancer, and is phenomenal at dancing. His visual spatial function is off the chart. And there is just no doubt in my mind that those two go hand in hand. Someone who has a really good understanding of where their body is in space and spatial relationships with between objects because of this amazing activity that he performs every day or you know almost every day really has a major impact on him and he has a risk factor for Lewy body dementia so it's super important for him to to think about this type of training and I think on that note while a lot of what we do is identifying ways we can improve someone's movement capacity and movement strategies A lot of it is also how do we tailor someone's exercise such that it's really benefiting their brain. And we know there are lots of different ways to exercise and there's no right way to exercise for every single person, but there are lots of different types of exercise and all of those things can have a different impact or different benefit in terms of the brain. Kelly and I do an assessment on people. We figure out where some opportunities or where we can pull on some levers to, you know, it may be someone's feet, it may be someone's eyes, it may be the way they breathe or clench their jaw. So it can kind of vary. But some examples are, we do a lot of visual training, especially with Parkinson's risk, higher risk patients, because the visuospatial stuff is the first thing that we can see, one of the first things that we can see that could be an issue. So a ton of that a ton of challenging balance by moving the eyes, a lot of hand-eye coordination work, visual processing speed. So we're playing with that. We play with a lot of apps. Blaze Pods is a great, a great example. Like a light turns on, you tap it just to keep them on their toes and constantly training that part of their brain. Um, we do a lot of respiration training, a lot of positional breathing, a lot of you know mouth taping while sleeping, mouth taping while doing certain exercises. Can you land on the beat when you're doing a front lunge or can you land on the beat when you're doing a squat jump? It helps with efficient loading, but it also makes you pay attention to your timing. So instead of just kind of randomly doing it, it can actually improve motor control if you're doing it to an auditory stimuli. Um, Also with people who have chronic pain, and anxiety around movement, which a lot of our patients do, using this auditory stimulation can help kind of like block that signal out and reduce fear over movement. So that's one tool that I use a lot. I've gotten to the point where I'm kind of bored if I don't have some sort of auditory stimulation. (laughs) If I don't have a metronome going on in my earphones, I feel like, well, something's missing. Um, I also like to use visual stimulation. So if this color, because it also trains 
you know, associative memory processing, visual processing speed. So for an example, like if this color pops up, I'm going to do a lateral lunge. If this color pops up, I'm going to do a push up. So it, and you can play with different speeds of how, you know, when it pops up, it's totally random. So those are a couple of examples of how we like to do this in the gym. Now, if we're just training visual activities, I'll have people sit at their desk and do pencil push-ups or tracking drills, just depending. It's a, you know, I was working with a patient this morning, actually, and, you know, doing some of this processing speed stuff and had her do, she was really slow, like she couldn't get it at all. So I would prime her with visual activity first, and then it was like, it totally woke her up and she was able to do it. While it's a temporary window in the beginning, just getting more exposure to moving fast and understanding what it feels like and being able to respond is a great way to train the brain because it's so plastic. So at the end of the day, you're just trying to make people pay attention when they're training because it's very easy to just kind of get on the treadmill and zone out and listen to a podcast. When you're not paying attention, you can't learn about what you're actually doing. We hope you enjoyed this video. To access a free Mastering Brain Health course led by Dr. Richard Isaacson, visit ind.org slash learn. And to directly contribute to IND's research efforts, visit ind.org slash donate.